What up, y'all? Welcome back. Another episode here at Kellen Time. And today we are looking at the Timex Q Quartz reissue uh, from 79. There's been a lot of um, talk about this guy. Obviously, I think everyone knows it sold out um, the first time they launched it. And um, I was kind of bummed. I was really looking at get, getting a hold of one. The scalpers' prices were crazy, especially for a Timex. And I think at the time, Timex acknowledged that it wasn't a limited edition. And like most other Timexes, once they sell out, they're gonna make more inventory, and that's what they did. So they released the second wave, which this is from, so I got this a couple weeks ago. That sold out, then they released another wave, that sold out, and I think that they're on um, one more batch coming soon in, in early October. So if you want it, just, just hold out, just wait, it'll come. It's not limited edition, um, Timex, just needs to produce more and uh, and then they'll sell it. So, so what's uh, the, you know what's so cool about this watch? I think a lot of people talked about um, the price on it because it's one hundred and eighty dollars and it's a quartz, pretty low grade quartz movement. Um, I believe it's a Seiko quartz, really low grade Seiko quartz movement. Um, if you can see the seconds don't even line up when it ticks on all of the hashes. Um, it's fairly accurate. It's for me. It's actually it's actually pretty accurate. It's within a second per day. Um, I mean, take that as you will with a with a quartz movement. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's great. But you know, you're getting an acrylic crystal low grade quartz movement, really cheap bracelet, and you're paying 180 bucks. Um, what I think, and the reason why this sold out so fast is a because you know what's hot right now is vintage reissue, obviously, so that helps. But this just works so well. Um, it's unique in that it's got its its own case design. Um, it's a Pepsi. It's got the you know vintage loom, um, and it's not like they just made this to cash in on what's hot today. Because all of those things are hot today. They actually released this watch, you know, some fifty years ago. Um, so you know, sorry, 40 years ago. But um, yeah, I think I think what you can't really uh, put a value on when you're, if you were to like, oh, I could build that watch for this X dollar amount is charm. At the end of the day, this watch just has a ton of charm. And I think that that's what's resonating with people. I think the combination of the case, the size at 38 and a half, um, the look, um, the vintage look to it, vintage but kind of crisp you know timeless look to it it's all great um, I think I think they really nailed it with this and for me you know being able to get it um, you know I actually once I got it I got rid of a couple other cheap divers because I was like well this is gonna take place of that so I had I had a couple I had a Russian um, Vostok that I got rid of because of this came in and I'll probably get rid of my SKX so if anyone's looking for an SKX with the sapphire crystal I'll be getting rid of that um, just because I know I'll wear this more than I wear those. And I think that that's, um, for me, that's something that's really cool now that this could be a, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a, you know, lust thing, but um, I've had it for a couple of weeks and I just think it's a great piece to have. It's fun, it's easy. Um, so yeah, what do I like about, or I guess what I don't like about it, the only thing, so for me, I have bigger wrists. I have almost, just almost a seven and a half inch wrist. So I'll probably have bigger wrists than most people. So I get that this is probably a me issue, but I have found out that this is about as small as a case size as I can do. 38 and a half is just about, just visually, um, it just it just looks small on my, like it's borderline too small. I guess I should just put it on for that piece, but borderline just too small for me. It works and I like it and I'll keep it. But even, like I, it's a good um, barometer for me that um, you know that I know now that anything smaller I can't do on my wrist. I just I just have too big a wrist for anything that was 36, 37. Obviously, 34 would be way too small for me. So that's good and bad for me. I think I know my limits now. I think this is about as small as I can go. Um, so it's a good and bad. What I really dislike is the clasp. It's trash. It's so bad. Um, it's this, 
I don't even know the name of the style class, but it just hooks here. Um, this hooks over this bar and then you just pop down this piece um, to adjust it you stick a flathead or something in there pop this piece up and then this whole thing slides which is great in theory because you can get really minute on your um, adjustment so you have you can just slide it just a bit forward However, in execution, it's a little bit difficult because so I just want to move it up two tiny links. Well, to get this to come undone, I have to use uh, a screwdriver of some kind or, or whatever, a tool, pop it in there, slide this open. When you do that, it's, it's not difficult, but it requires a bit of pressure and, and to keep the spot that you were at, unless you like put a piece of tape or something to mark your spot, it's not as easy as just holding your thumb there and sliding this back and forth to pick, oh, I just want to go up two notches, slide it forward. If it were that easy, it'd be great because it's a little bit difficult to loosen this up and you lose your spot and then to get that micro adjustment back unless you're counting or like I said, put a piece of tape on there. Um, it kind of sucks. Um, <clears throat> that being said with the bracelet, it's got some good flexibility. It's not like it's not gonna fold over on itself. That's about as um, articulated as it's gonna get that's enough to contour just about any wrist um you know you can see it, it it's gonna it's gonna fit like anything any any kind of size wrist that you have so that's not an issue um i have read and heard online that it's a hair puller um luckily i don't really have much arm hair so i haven't noticed that personally but if you're someone that has had issues in the past with um with watches having Pulling bracelets, pulling your arm hair. Um, apparently, this is going to do it. So, um, another good and bad is I kind of love the friction-based um, bezel. Um, the you know the twelve-hour friction-based bezel. Um, it's a little bit different from uh, your standard dive watch, but this is kind of how um, early GMTs uh, did their bezel. They didn't have a click system, or even early dive watches um, before they implemented the the click si click system. So. Um, it's just something to get used to. I think some of I think their QC on this is a little bit hit or miss because I've seen some people where this. Um, I mean, I have there is some friction here, so it's not like if you bump your watch, it's just going to slide or you can just spin it. But I have seen other people online have that issue where it, it, they feel like it's a little bit too too free, not enough friction, if you will, on the on the friction based bezel. Um, you can see it's got that kind of old school um, aluminum style insert that looks like an old rolex if you will or any of the old inserts uh, which i kind of love obviously it's going to scratch easy it's not ceramic it's not anything like that it's not loomed it's nothing special but um something about that the way that those look it gives it just a a great look and feel to the to the bezel insert um and I guess if you just threw this on your windowsill and let the sun get at it, it's going to fade over time or you could probably pop it off and, and pre-fade it, um, which would actually look kind of cool with the, with the vintage loom. If you um, did those tricks that people do with a little bit of bleach or something like that, if you wanted to go full, full vintage look on this thing. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think, um, and it's got a Navy dial, which um, it's a darker Navy dial. Like, you know, sometimes it can look black in the right light. Um, almost the insert is even darker than the than the dial, the the blue on the insert. Um, but it's just got a lot of charm to it, man. You pop this thing on your wrist; it's fun. You feel like you know. It just for me, it just makes me happy, and that's why I like this watch a lot. And I, I mean, it's a keeper for me, for the price point, for the fun factor, for the smile factor. It's kind of it's kind of a home run in that regard. So if you guys can get your hands on one, I highly suggest it. Um, I think it's I think it's a great watch and a great buy. Um, I'm probably going to put it on a different band. Um, I'm not a big fan of this this bracelet, like I mentioned. So I've seen other people swap out with some other um, other style bracelets. The only tricky part is it's 18 mil, and then it flares out to I believe 20 right there. So you have to find something that's similar in design where it has that um, smaller um, lug width, and then it flares out so it so that it meets that case case size right there and 
Um, this got some nice aggressive taper to it, which I do enjoy. I always like a nice taper to a bracelet. Um, I just can't get past that clasp. I hate it. Um, other than that, I think it's a really fun watch. Um, it comes in your standard Timex box that, that they've been doing the last couple of years, um, that long box, same box that actually um, this guy came in and this guy's for sale if anybody's interested, 200 bucks shipped, um, hardly worn, still has the stickers on it front and back. Um, I brought it in for a review. I love looking at it, it's a great watch, I'm just, just not wearing it. I just don't wear this style of watch too often. So if anybody wants that, 200 bucks shipped, let me know. Um, everything is included box, just like you would buy it brand new. Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions guys. Um, just a quick video on this Timex Q reissue, uh, really fun watch. Like I said, if you haven't gotten one, just just hold your horses, it'll come, you'll get one. Um, I actually got mine through Market Long Island Watches. Um, he posts up some inventory every now and then. I'm sure he'll get, if he can get his hands on more units, he's going to, um, and then I got mine through him. Timex, the same thing. They keep posting updates on when they're getting more inventory, so just keep an eye out, you'll get one. Like I said, bang for the buck. Um, Probably, technically probably not the best watch you can get, but smiles for the buck or what makes you happy, this thing is this thing ticks all the boxes for me. So let me know what questions you have, guys. Quick video. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, later.